Our final topic for class diagrams is how do we add behavior to them. So we've added attributes and we've added associations and we need to describe how these classes must behave. Doing that is very simple in a UML diagram. You can see some examples down here on the bottom of the screen. So we add them as methods. They're implemented as described as methods. And within that description, we must specify the name of the action, any parameters it requires, any types that those parameters should take, and any particular return type if they're necessary. Now, in a UML diagram, we never specify actions for getting and setting properties just because for many classes it becomes um, way too uh, way too onerous and that description becomes um, very very unwieldy uh, an exception might be if we have a unique getter like we have here which uh, which returns a map of some relationship um, but the core getters and setters for the basic fields we don't need to specify it's implied that they are there by having attributes by themselves so taking a look at this course object we've got two attributes a code and an administrator which are both strings and then we've got two methods the first is a simple commit method um, it doesn't return anything it doesn't take any parameters and it has some action which can be just you can see the description of the action that would do back in the text description and that's all we need the second example is slightly more complicated uh, the get candidate assigns this is essentially get all of the projects a particular student is assigned to um, or get all of the students sorry that are assigned to a particular project this returns a map object that maps uh, a project to a list of students the multiplicity here is the same that we saw before and if we look at our project object we can see a couple of other behaviors down the bottom so we can run this method called remaining capacity and that will return an integer say how many spaces are left in this project and we can also assign students to that project by passing them um, in as as passing them into this method as a list of student objects two other examples which I think are useful let's say you've got a bank account object with some feel with some attributes up here um, our two actions that you might want to do on a bank account are deposit and again we'd have an amount here as a parameter with type float and withdraw uh, an amount name with a type float by contrast if you had a flight for example an airplane flight class uh, one of the actions might be delay flight so we would input the number of minutes which would be an integer or we could use get arrival time which you'll notice is not one of these core core fields so it's not covered by the getters and setters which will return a date object so those few examples that I've shown you there should tell you how to show parameters um, and arguments and return values on class diagrams the final thing that I want to mention before we finish up talking about class diagrams is what are those other classes so we've dealt with course project student and lab room these are all data objects they contain information that we need so does the uh, associations between them however often we'll have higher level classes that we want to add in to tidy up our project and the simplest example is usually a system class that ties all the data together initializes any data that we need to have and initializes the interface so what we've done here is we've created a super class if you like called project allocator it has a couple of methods it has no attributes of its own and it's only got unidirectional relationships to other objects um, from this project allocator we can have as many courses and projects as we want uh, and we've just got these two methods initialize data and set up interface whatever it is they need to do um, we could also have secondary agents so let's say this needed to talk to an external website system well we might change the data for a student a course and a project to interface it more effectively with this external system so we might use another class to do that and finally if there are other components of the interface you might have a GUI you might have a hardware interface you can also create classes for them quite often interfacing classes will be used in addition to a system class and really that's it uh, the link that I've got on screen at the moment is a useful video taking you through implementation but I'll take you through implementation of class diagrams in Java in the next video